this is a wall of my studio in Glasgow, and it is um, it has two projects I'm currently working on, which shows my kind of interest in analog and digital. This part here being analog, and this here being digital. So these two shirts are printed at Print Clan, which is an open access textile print studio in Glasgow. And this textile here is printed at Centre for Advanced Textiles at Glasgow School of Art. Uh, a big part of Haxon is exploring my interest in brush marks and texture uh, and gesture. So this is a drawing made on paper, uh, which when I'm working with the Centre for Advanced Textiles, I would literally give them this drawing, which is about A4 size, and they would scan it and we would develop the image through scanning and then potentially would change the scale to produce something like this. So that's something I'm really interested in about digital. It allows me to explore the transition of working from very small to very large. So this textile here is printed on heavy cotton and the repeat height of this image is four and a half meters. So it's going to be a very, very large scale textile. At the moment, I'm not quite sure what it's going to be used for, whether it be for home furnishing, uh, for fashion, or potentially it might be used in an exhibition that's going to happen uh, next year. So at this stage, we're just exploring with different densities of black and exploring the, the sort of different pixelation that you get through the digital, which is an extreme contrast to this image here, which is a similar brush stroke, which um, hasn't changed in scale. I've just worked with a very large brush on a sheet of acetate and then transferred that image directly onto a screen. So the image that's on the screen is what you what is what is printed. So there isn't really much room for manipulation where there is a lot of room for manipulation in the digital. I'm kind of really interested in the contrast of both. What I'm particularly excited about in the analog, in this case here, is these two shirts are obviously pre-made, made in advance of printing them. So when I'm printing on them, I get all sorts of traces of the seams and the buttons and the sewing of the basic construction of the garment comes through in the printing. There's little folds here that become very um, apparent. So these are basically errors or mistakes or things that I didn't quite anticipate, but they're things that really become interesting for me. So I like the unexpected through the analog, whereas as opposed to digital, everything is kind of very much planned out, worked out on the screen, and then when it prints, it prints exactly how, you're as, how, how you expect it to be or how you want it to be, but with the analog, there's a much more possibility for the unexpected and the unknown. I went to Glasgow Art School in the late 70s and studied printed textiles from 1978 to 81. And then went to the Royal College and also studied printed textiles there. And that was an interesting time for me to study because it was obviously before digital, before internet, so everything was analog. So the importance of drawing and mark making was kind of really installed into the way that I think, which is still something that's kind of very important to me today. I went to Chicago in 2001 for a one-year visiting artist position to teach in the Department of Fibre Material Studies and it seemed such a good home for me to be as an artist and an educator. I stayed there for 16 years. In 2013 I received a sabbatical from the school and returned to Scotland for one year and it was during that year that I fell in love with Scotland, particularly the landscape and it was kind of the motivation that kind of inspired me to eventually move back to Glasgow in 2017. When I came back to Glasgow, it was a very different place to when I first left in 1981. So it was important for me to reconnect to the city and to find people that I can collaborate with and kind of engage in a way of thinking and making. So there was lots of meetings and interactions 
lots of joining the dots to kind of find the family or the people who I wanted to work with. And that includes Franz Mags, who's um, working with at the moment as part of Haxton to form the fashion collection. So Franz, tell me a little bit about yourself and how you ended up in Glasgow and where you studied, what your education was like. Uh, well, I was born in Kirkwall in Orkney and moved down to Dumfries and Galloway. And then once I finished school there, I decided to come to Glasgow to study at the Glasgow School of Art, where I studied fashion design. I took about a year out after I'd finished my undergraduate to just explore myself uh -huh. as a kind of designer, as well as I took a couple of roles in film, doing costume. One was a major production for Netflix, Outlocking. Um, that one was a great experience, although it was really just exhausting, it was full on. But it really developed me, you know, to work faster and deadlines and... Okay. And then after that, just a couple of other roles, doing little bits and bobs for other films and independents and doing private commissions for individual clients. So, and so was your master's, uh, was that an important experience for you? Did, did that, yeah, that was a good... Oh yeah, um, that was like one of the best decisions I ever made was okay. to go back and do my master's because it was, it was such a free course, I think is the best way to say it. You're very independent direction you, know, you can choose what you want to do and how you want to do it and they're there to guide you and really just so is that that seems something that's very important to you that you you have a lot of freedom so you don't work solely for one designer you don't work for a corporate company you're a freelance designer couture designer so you like that um the freedom that, that allows you to work creatively is yeah that, yeah like um i mean when i work with clients and i have to kind of stay in a way to their requirements, uh -huh. but within that I can have kind of complete free reign. Uh -huh. And then when I'm doing my own thing, I just free reign to go as crazy, big, small uh -huh. as I want to. Okay. And you work from your home? Oh yeah, I work from home. Your, your, just, your studio is your living room? Yes, my studio. <laughs> okay, that's great. And Franz, you and I met about a year and a half ago. We were introduced by a friend from Glasgow School of Art and mm -hmm. we started to meet. We had coffee and we chatted about our interests and I talked to you about uh, the development of Haxton and how that was going to move forward using print to create uh, some garments. So we our collaboration started through conversation and through looking at some textiles I was designing. And then you went away and you have this amazing book here that I'm just looking at, which is your sort of research book, is that right? So you're, yeah. you're looking at the work I was making in the 80s through the cloth yeah. and using that as inspiration for garments that... Um, that allow the textiles to be used in a way that the, the prints become visible. Is that right? So again, in the 80s, the silhouette was very large scale, big padded shoulders, big silhouettes. So um, the print or the colour was very kind of important to that. So we're kind of echoing that concept visually now through the Haxton collection. Is that is that right? Do you yeah. want to talk a little bit about how you sort of develop your ideas for garments? Uh, well, I started off, of course, looking at what you had done previously and then just exploring other ways people have played with the classic shirt design, whether it's changing the texture or huge patterns, shrinking okay. pieces, exploding pieces. And then I just went from there. Really, it was the print that really drove the ideas that I had uh -huh. because they were such bold, dynamic designs. I really wanted to show off, you know, like a full panel within mm -hmm. the shirts and the garments. Yeah, the scale of the print is so important, isn't it? I mean, oh, yeah. you know, these are very large scale um, designs. So, it's, you know, the mark making is very large. It's not small scale. So yeah. the surface or the, the amount of fabric in the garment is kind of important, is it not? Oh, definitely. Uh, I had great fun planning out some of these garments because there was specific figures in some of your patterns which I wanted to really show in full and then other times I left it to chance how they were kind of cut together and it, to see them kind of as the seam lines met the one figure kind of molded into the other figure and back and forth created this beautiful new design from your designs. 
One of the key sort of garments in our collection is uh, the four-sleeved shirt, which exists uh, in different fabrics and different materials, uh, different weights, different prints. Um, and the concept of that four-sleeved shirt, if I was right, that um, again, it was through the pandemic that we were talking about the, the extra sleeves, the two extra sleeves could be used as scarves, as masks, as belts. So kind of the pandemic maybe also kind of allowed for a new sort of way of thinking about design, did it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah okay, just cool. uh, very, keeping it very versatile and, you know, going out to buy multiple outfits where you can just buy the one and then change it up. Mm -hmm. And I remember as well that uh, you know, everything like, um, first of all, you make a toile of, yeah. the, of the garment and uh, we had this very important moment You'd make a twelve, then I would print on the twelve mm. uh, using silk screen uh, printing at Print Clan, and I'd also do these um, hand painted images on them as well, which became yeah. part of a performative sort of fashion shoot. Um, and I like that that idea probably wouldn't have happened if it hadn't been that I sort of witnessed the whole experience of you cutting the patterns, making the twelve, mm. discussing the kind of importance of the twelve, and seeing the twelve literally as a canvas for me to then sort of paint on top of. Yeah. So we we work very fluidly to some extent in that we don't, uh, yeah, we let the sort of collection or the garments kind of lead their own way. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. They've provided a nice bridge between your large scale prints uh -huh. and canvases to the shirts that I've been mm -hmm. making. And we also, uh, very early on, we talked about that we want a collection to be gender neutral. Yes. But, um, so that's really important to us as well. And the sizing of it is one size fits all, is that right? Yes, yeah, pretty much one size fits, fits all. all. So um, again, echoing that sort of 80s concept of, of the large, large scale garment. At the moment, what we're doing, Franz, is we, we have these individual garments, basically shirts and jackets and coats but now we are developing it as a collection. Mm -hmm. So our goal at the moment is to turn these individual garments into a 10 look collection. Yeah. So how is that working out for you? How, how are you basically designing bottoms for the outfits, like sh trousers and you're gonna make a kilt, is that right? Yeah, um, I'm very excited about making the kilt. I actually went to the bars and found an old kilt which I can take apart and then wow. reconstruct. Cause I've never made one before. So okay. I'm really excited about giving it a try. It's a very classic, traditional Scottish item. And it's going to be using the large arc print. It's going to be using this big brush mark print. Oh, yeah, the big brush so mark So it's print. printed on cotton. So it'll be, a very, be a white kilt with a big black brush mark on it. Yeah, yeah, that's exciting. I'm really keen to see how these brush marks are going to look when they're folding through uh -huh. the, the pleats through the back. So how many metres for a kilt is it? Uh, this one has about five metres wow. in it. Okay. It's quite nice doing the bottoms or the trousers uh, this time rather than doing them together because it's a way of kind of looking back at everything I've done, so giving it another look and just reminding myself of each time that I put these together and mm -hmm. trying to really bring that back into the, each one of the individual trousers. Is there anything you particularly enjoy working with Axton? Is there anything about the collaboration that you feel is relevant to you or...? Uh, well, I've become very good friends with yourself, which is, I think is definitely important when designing and working together. You know, uh -huh. We just have a good dynamic, we have fun, you know, we have dinner together, dinner parties, had a good laugh. Um, also, I find the fabric and print and textiles that you've created really have really motivated me. Uh -huh. I mean, I've just responded so well to them, I've just taken right to them. They're very, very different from the fabrics that I created for my master's collection, which is where you first saw my right, work right, and then met absolutely. myself. I was all 1970s, oversaturated colour, flower power, and yours is very stark, minimalist, almost. Mm -hmm. Would that be? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think that's, uh, you know, my interest in, in you as a designer is that um, I think you've developed an ident a visual identity for hacks and through garments, which is very separate uh, to Franz Mags, your own collection. There's a there's definitely a a, a joining of your aesthetic concerns um, and your skills as a pattern cutter and maker and designer, but uh, you you're bringing a kind of different voice to the Haxton collection, and I mm. think that's kind of inspiring and in um, it doesn't doesn't conflict with your own label to some extent. Would you agree mm. with that? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it shows, you know, your strength as a designer that you can be flexible to working in, in multiple ways. 
We haven't spoken yet what's going to happen after this collection that we make for Haxton. Have you any thoughts of how you will continue to work with Haxton? What do you think your role will be? Um, I'm not quite sure. Things we have never, <laughs> kind of <laughs> never discussed thought about it. it. Although there is... Um, I would like to continue it in some way. Uh, yeah. If it can't be a bigger project as this, but make something that... Like, set up a kind of a small brand where uh, you know more uh, more wearable versions of these garments can be made and sold yeah yes yeah, so i think i think that's a a conversation that will happen once we finish this part of the project we'll yeah. we'll sort of sit down and discuss how we move forward or how it's going to work for both of us yeah i definitely love to continue working with yeah. you and there are some of your paintings you know like massive large scale ones which i would love to cut up and make some garments into oh uh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go that's, a, that's an idea yeah always wondering what to do with those paintings so we can make them into garments but yeah i think there's there's lots of potential and i think um we're just at the beginning of a, a much bigger project but how how to realistically move it forward is something that you know we have to continue to have that conversation oh yeah definitely In 2014, I donated my archive from 1977 to 1987, a 10-year period, which contained all the work I made at Glasgow Art School and the Royal College and during the cloth. As it's now in the GSA archive, I can spend time looking at that work and revisiting that work and rediscovering ways of thinking and making that were relevant then and are still relevant now. And that has in some way encouraged me to particularly pay attention to going back to looking at printed textiles through an analogue way, working with silkscreen, working at Print Clan in Glasgow, and sort of revisiting some of the imagery I was using then, which was drawings, which are drawings of landscapes with figures cast, or shadows of figures cast across um, this sort of craggy landscape of the west coast of Scotland. Haxon came about as it was an invitation to have an exhibition in Chicago at the Slow Gallery. The director and curator Paul Hopkins was interested in the archive that I'd given to GSA and kind of again was prompting me to revisit that work and make work that was inspired by that reflection. So Daniel Ibbison from Graphical House was very excited about Haxon as being my middle name and how kind of graphically that really looked as a logo. So that was kind of the jumping off point to create the concept of Haxon and develop the way that it would move forward. Cloth was formed in 1983, in the final year of my time at the Royal College of Art. The Cloth was established with three friends from that year, myself, David Band, Brian Bolger and Helen Manning. And the four of us decided to form the Cloth because we had very shared interests in establishing a studio which would start to dissolve or break down the barriers between fine art and design. So rather than compete with each other, it seemed appropriate that we kind of formed um, a group or a collective that we could work collaboratively and work together. So our final degree show at the Royal College was um, a group show. There was no individual names presented. It was just the name, the cloth. And it was an exciting time because the scale of the work we were making was very large, but because of that, we assumed that we would probably work with interior or architects, but because of what was happening in fashion at the time, very large silhouettes of the garments, our prints were very appropriate for, for designers to incorporate into the collection. So that was kind of unexpected surprise, 
but, a, but an area of work that really helped to lead us forward and to take us into a direction that we did not anticipate. My reason to study printed textiles at Glass School of Art was that at that time in the late 70s, early 80s, the department was led by Jimmy Cosgrove, Liz Monroe, Chuck Mitchell and other artists who were mainly interested in work that kind of again transitioned or sat between fine art and design. Um, it was not a department that was industry led, it was a department that encouraged you to experiment through drawing, to explore different avenues of textile design and other areas of design and printing. So it was a very um, interactive department, it was an interdisciplinary department. It was very expressive and exciting and very vibrant time to be working in that department. The same ethos was kind of installed at the Royal College where Barbara Brown, the head of the department, was also very keen on exploring the importance of drawing and how drawing could lead into, your, into textile projects. You were given very much a free hand in what you did. It was very much self-led. So again, it was a very exciting and appropriate place for, for me to study during the early 80s. When I first moved back to Glasgow in 2017, one of my goals was to establish a print studio in Glasgow to allow both artists and designers to explore their own work. I bought a print table the following year and actually discovered that that print table was the very table that I printed on at Glass School of Art and that is now housed at Print Clan in the High Street in Glasgow. So that is now facilities that I can go and other artists and designers can go and use as an open access studio to develop ideas in a very free and experimental way. So I take my drawings there, I expose them to screen and do a lot of sampling and playing about before I get to the final stage of printing yardage, which is then given to Franz, who then develops them into fashion collections. My name is Alan Shaw and I manage the Centre for Advanced Textiles at the Glasgow School of Art. Um, the centre was set up in 1999 um, with Scottish Higher Education funding. Um, I was a student at Glasgow School of Art and printed textiles and I realised that we hadn't really had a lot of training in the digital side of print. Uh, so what what I was interested in coming back to the school and doing was to set up a centre where we would um, look at the digitisation of textile designs and the output of them digitally with the latest technology. So back in 1999 we were using things like very, very, um, the very, very first digital printers um, which had been sort of customised to print textiles. Um, we ended up getting funded to set up the centre and we bought the world's first digital production printer. Um, which had its own challenges because of, of something new like that. Um, and, but basically the idea of the centre was um, for industry and students to access the technology and learn what it could do um, as opposed to what they had been using traditionally via analogue printing, which is the background I had come from. I mean, I've known Fraser for a long time. Fraser actually used to teach me when I was a student at GSA. Um, and Fraser was, it was obviously, when Fraser came back from America, he was very excited about the technology and how he could um, access it. Um, and then Fraser comes from quite an analogue um, background in terms of printing, like myself. Um, so he was excited about how he could um, look at um, the work that he was doing and the advantages in using the equipment that we had. And, you know, it's not all um, equipment that we have within CAT, so it start, the basic scanning process and the photogra digital photography side of things, that can kind of be done anywhere. So what Fraser would normally do would be sometimes drop us in a design and get us to do the scanning because we've got quite good access to quite good scanners. Um, or Fraser would um, maybe send me a digital file that he had scanned elsewhere. What we would then do would take that file and um, either digitise it or 
manipulate it to the way that Fraser would want it to look. Sometimes it's not just a case of taking a picture of something and pressing print on the digital printer to output it. What Fraser kind of wants is to kind of, um, and through discussion with him, it was always clear to me that what Fraser wanted was uh, the benefits uh, of the digital print, um, but some somebody didn't want it to look too digital. So basically, um, that involves us working in ways that we have done for years, where we're kind of cleaning up some aspects of the of the artwork. Um, we're maybe enlarging things. Uh, we're ch playing about with colour. We're taking away all the kind of digitally removing all the things that you might not want to see, but keeping in some things that Fraser quite likes that that maybe are kind of like unique within his work. So we're not cleaning everything out. We're not we're not making it look like a screen print, but we're sort of kind of doing a halfway house between a screen print and a digital print photograph it can be um, a scan and depending on, on what the subject matter is one suit better than the other um, so basically what we're doing as opposed to the whole photographic process that goes on with traditional printing analog printing with digital it's a little bit like what you would do at home you know you take a picture of something you print it out of your printer but as you probably have noticed from doing things like that that it doesn't always give you the effect that you want so what we'll often do is scan something in or photograph it Take, bring it back into Photoshop or another CAD program like that, um, adjust it, manipulate the digital artwork. We may enlarge things, we may tweak about with some of the colours, we may tweak about with the contrast, shadow, um, the depth of colour. So all of those things and then what we'll probably do is feed that back to Fraser via email or Fraser will drop in and have a look at some things. Then we'll have a sampling process. I mean the fantastic thing about digital is that you're not having to reduce that original drawing down into um, screens, which is what Fraser would do with the analogue process, so one colour per screen really. Um, we can print about 50 million colours at any one time onto the piece of fabric, like most digital printers can do. So that's a huge advantage um, because you're not really having to lose out anything from the original drawing. But there, there's also times where Fraser has given us things where it's a very complex drawing with lots of tones and textures and he's just decided us, decided to ask us to make it look like an analogue um, piece of work so we actually we can we can also mimic traditional printing by giving a certain piece of artwork the look that, that we know that Fraser might want for a certain thing so we kind of mixes um, more traditional looking printing coming from a digital printer that's a bit confusing but an advantage for that you might wonder what that is but we can still play about with the color we can play about with the scale if we print something out for Fraser we can just decide to half size it or make it double size um, or you know, change about, drop a colour in. And when you're working with analogue, that's not so easy to do. So there's all sorts of um, you know, advantages of the digital process against the analogue. I mean, the analogue process is great too, but when you've kind of created all those screens for printing, then you're kind of, you have to work with what you've got. With digital, you can just print half a metre, stop the machine, enlarge it, change the colour, print another half metre. Collaboration is a very important part of my practice because it allows me to engage in different areas of art and design that I maybe don't have the technical ability to achieve myself.